Hello everybody, today we're going to take a look at this Nintendo 64. This belongs to a friend of mine, and a different friend than the last one. I actually like this one. Ooh, friend! And he sent me over a few things to look at, including this N64. There's a couple of handheld games in there as well. I'm going to start on this one, because I'm quite interested to see what could be the problem with this, because I don't think they fail very often. So all he's told me is that it doesn't power on, he's checked the fuse in the plug, fuse is good, still doesn't power on. So let's hook it up and see what happens. Okay, so we're switched on, let's power the unit on, and nothing, so there's no, no red light. So I suppose the first thing we should check is to see if there's anything actually coming out of this power supply. So let's put the multimeter onto DC voltage. Nintendo very conveniently labelled up the six pins here, so the top left, bottom left, middle, bottom are all ground. Top middle is 3.3 volts, top right is 3.3 volts, and bottom right is 12 volts. So let's stick the negative lead in one of the grounds and let's go for a 3.3 volt first and zero uh, let's try this one also zero and let's try the 12 volt also zero let's try a different ground point just in case no so i'm not getting anything out of that whatsoever that goes without saying that messing around with power supplies is dangerous it does look like this one is openable I'm going to disconnect it from the from the plug, and I'm going to leave it for a while so that it, you know it will help discharge the capacitors. But I will also see because I'm guessing there's some big f off capacitors inside this thing, so I'll check them for voltage obviously before I start doing anything. All right, so it looks like this has got that game bit screws on it, but I think my M4 seems to fit. No, it doesn't. I must have a game bit somewhere, but I go and find it. Found it. Fun. Okay, we're in. All right. Obviously, I do need to be a bit careful now. There we go. And there's a big capacitor. Right, let's just check the voltage on that capacitor before we go any further. Nothing. The problem with this is I can't exactly go plugging this in and checking for voltages around the place because I will kill myself and I'm not quite ready to do that. Right, so we're not getting any voltage out, are we? So there's no 12 volt and there's no 3.3 volt. And I would have thought that they were dealt with, well they'd be on two separate rails and that we dealt with by two different parts of the circuit. So does that suggest that the 240 volts isn't making it as far as the the voltage regulator? Is that what it is? Bridge rectifier? Not sure. Which I think, is that what this thing is here? Is that a fuse? Is there a fuse? I suppose we should check that if there is. That one has fuse written on it. Maybe that's the fuse. From there to there, yeah. So that fuse is okay. Right, so it looks like this component here is the bridge rectifier. So let's put our multimeter onto diode mode. Let's just see if we can test this bridge rectifier. Right, so I'm getting a reading there 0.62 and open. Open, and I'm guessing this is 0.62. There we go. Beep, beep, beep. This is the 3.3, and this one is the 12 volt. And everything from here to here seems to be okay. Oh, 
I just can't see what's going on inside there. Right, I'm pretty sure it's something on this board, this little board here. Uh, it looks like a right pain in the backside to get out. Right, let's get this under the microscope. Right, so it looks like the high voltage comes in these three pins here. And then, where does it go? I think the only way that I'd be able to repair this would be to, to plug it in and start following voltages around the place and I'm just not comfortable doing that. So I'm going to put this back together and I'm going to move on to the next one. Hello, voiceover Stephen here. Just before I move on to the next item, I just want to check this console with my known working power supply. Just to make sure that it is working and to kind of prove that the power supply is at fault. And then I can tell my ooh friend to go and purchase a new one. Power supply, that is. Thanks. Okay, so here it is. I've just put my power pack in the back. I swapped it for this one, which is mine. It's looking a bit dusty. but um, So let's see if it comes on now. Yes, it does. So it's definitely the power pack. One thing I have noticed, though, the reset button appears to be stuck down. Yeah. So nothing's going up on the TV. Okay, so I am going to have to sort that out. That's weird. Let's see what I can do with that. Right, so let's take this apart. We've only got six six screws. Looks like six game bit screws on the back. So should be fairly easy. Shazam! Nice. Right, so this is the reset button here. And it pushes on to this point here. Well, that all seems fine. So I guess it's just stuck here. It's got two tabs either side. There we go, just pops out. Um, that looks fine. Let's give it a bit of a clean inside there. Maybe it was a little bit of debris or something. There we go. Yeah, I think that'd be fine. So it must have just got caught, because everything's working fine there. Okay, let's pop that back together and test that out now. All right, let's test it now. Reset button works. Red light. Ta-da! Okay, and this is the next item. How awesome is that? It is a Systema, or System A, Back to the Future 3 game, by the looks of it, from October 1991. And I've never seen this before, but it's a cute little thing, isn't it? It's really nice, and it's in decent condition. Now, apparently, this has no power, it just doesn't come on at all. So, let's get some batteries and, and try it out. To open... Press pin into hole and slide off. There we go. Right, looks like it takes two LR44s, I think they are. And there we go, I have two here. Uh, I've just checked them, they're both 1.5 something volts, so they should be fine. Oh. Well, it looks like there's two... There's obviously two holes for batteries, but there's only one contact. Does it only take one battery? What? Uh, I don't know. Or is there, is there a bit missing? Yeah, that doesn't... Well, that doesn't do anything. I'm guessing it only, take, it only needs one battery, but maybe that's what's wrong with it. Oh! Oh! Ooh! Oh, 
wow. Um, <laughs> right, this is even more similar to the Sonic one that I did, in that it displays characters and just plays the theme tune and then dies. Hmm. Oh! <laughs> Brilliant. Right, well, oh, I don't know what... I'm... I mean, this could be the crystal again, it could be the chip, I don't know. But I'm curious to see what's inside this thing, so let's crack it open and have a look. Crack! There we go. It looks like the, the speakers are these little springs, it's quite clever that. So there's no wires connecting the speaker to the board. We've just got a spring that goes into the centre and a spring that goes around the outside of it. That's pretty cool, I like that. Now I can see the dreaded blob chip. Covered in epoxy there. Right, well let's uh, take the remaining screws out and have a look at the other side. Okay. Wow, there's even less on this one. So the battery contact is just there, it's that, and it must just touch onto here. And they look nice and clean, it doesn't look like there's any corrosion. In fact, it's, it's incredibly clean, isn't it? Right, well, if it's not that capacitor or that transistor, there's nothing else it can be other than the blob chip. There's no crystal on this. What a shame. I don't think I'm going to be able to get this working. Let's put the screen to one side. Right. The capacitor doesn't look like it's soldered on very well, but it is on. Got a couple more components here now. Um, I mean, it, I don't think there's anything wrong with them, but for what it's worth, let's get it under the microscope and have a quick look. Right, so that's positive the battery there. Goes into this little capacitor here. Into the blob chip. The other side of it goes. Into this poorly soldered capacitor. I mean, I might try and just reflow that, but I, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I don't know, what are they? I've never seen that before. I've got to be honest. Don't don't know what that are, what that is. It must be something to do with with the audio. Are they meant to be bridged? But that does look like it's been done at factory, doesn't it? And it is does look like maybe it is deliberate. That also doesn't look like it's. Is that even on there? Yes, it is. I mean, it doesn't look it, does it? Right, why would they be bridged? Like, unless there is a track there, and the solder has just jumped across the track. But I'm very tempted to uh, just remove that, just in case. I mean, maybe this thing has never worked. I don't know. And then what have we got down here? So we've got, so it's an NPN transistor, and we've got the base. Oh, it's got a B on it, I only just noticed. So we've got... The base is on the right, then we've got the collector in the middle and the emitter on the left. So I should be able to test that. So let's put multimeter into diode mode and let's check the base to the emitter is giving 2.3. Hmm. Try it the other way. Point seven. Point seven, I would kind of expect, but two point something. Check the collector. Got zero point seven. Hmm. I don't think that's right. I mean, I don't know for definite, but I thought they were meant to read something one way and then nothing the other. Right, well, I don't know. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to inspect this. So let's get the soldering iron on. Yeah, there is a track there, isn't there? Yeah. Okay, then we'll leave that. 
Well, we've got the soldier now. Iron on. Let's um, let's take this off and measure it out circuit. Oh, is that pad moving? I thought the pad was moving then. The pad is moving. Oh, I wonder if that was the problem or whether I... I mean, I'm only on what... And this board is thin. I'm only on 360 degrees. Well, it was possible that was a problem, but I'll, I, will, I will never know because I've kind of I've done it now, haven't I? Let's see if we can not do it to the other ones. Put it in a board holder. Even though I don't think that was me, I'm still I still feel kind of responsible for that. But I don't. See what else I could have done if it. Okay, maybe I should have started at 300 or something, but. Right, well, let's take this out. Right, well, let's test it now. Out of circuit. Right, well, that's reading open now. And that one's reading open. S Switch the probes around. Yeah, point six seven. Yeah, point seven and point six nine, whatever it is. I think that's fine. So let's try and get that back in. Do a little bit of repair work on that. It's possible that that was the problem. Maybe it it, it wasn't. Um, it wasn't making a connection. Maybe that pad was lifted. Because I didn't really do a lot. <laughs> I know I'm trying to justify it. But I'm going to try and put this pad back. And then I'm just going to run a little very, very small. I might just try and bridge it with some solder. Probably isn't going to need much. I think I've got it, but I've also bridged it to the one, <laughs> the one next to it. Let's clean that up. I'm not sure whether I've got that or not, but worst case scenario, I can just run a very small wire. Right, there we go. I think they're making a decent connection. I'm just going to check it just to make sure that that is going where it needs to. So I'll we'll check it from the top of the leg to there. Yep, yeah, okay. That's all fine. It goes from there all the way to here. And it's making a good connection. Right, well, I'm just going to make sure that that capacitor is soldered on because it doesn't look great, but I'm pretty sure it's okay. Yeah, why didn't I take that off and just double check that it's okay? Because I'm an idiot, that's why. Right, well, let's take it off and then check it and then we can put it back on. There are no markings on this capacitor. <laughs> Alright, well let's see if the tester recognises it as a capacitor. Oh, it's an inductor. 20.2 microhenries. 
yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's that's good or not, but it it's not saying it's damaged. Right, so it doesn't matter which is positive and negative on an inductor, does it? Which is good, because they're not marked up and I wasn't paying attention. Right, I can't see what else I can do. I, I'm not going to go messing about with that blob chip. I can't see any um, broken traces or anything. So, I, I feel like I haven't done anything other than break it a bit and then fix it. Let's um, pop it back together and see if that's made any difference. Yes! Not a chance did I think that that would work. I don't actually know what I did. Right, mode, game, super game. Let's, let's go for game. Right, so that's left and right. Oh, I don't know what to do. What are you supposed to do? It's like Frogger. Ah, right, you have to go in front of it. Right, I think I've got it now. Right, I haven't got it, but maybe I'll get it this time. Yes! Right, so I've got one car in 1885, and one in 1955, oh, one in 2015, and now I need one in 1985. Why have I got horses? Where they come from? Ah, I will complete this game. Right, well, I'm really happy with that. I think it must have been that transistor. I think the pad must have come away from the track there. I mean, I didn't check it before before I started messing about with it. Yeah, there mustn't have been continuity on that track. I can't see what else it could be. Maybe it was the inductor. Maybe that wasn't solid on property. That's all I've done. So I basically took those both off, put them back on, and I mess around with the solder around the, uh, the two components that looked like they were bridged. I think they were supposed to be bridged and giving it a little bit of a clean but it was already incredibly clean so I don't think it's the cleaning that sorted it I wonder how many times I can say clean anyway it's done it looks lovely doesn't even need a clean look at it okay well, anyway I'll see you guys in the clean one uh, the next one on the next clean how do you turn it off